Welcome to February's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is, is graph bipartite? There is an undirected graph with n nodes, where each node is numbered between 0 and n minus 1. You are given a 2D array graph, where graph u is an array of nodes that node u is adjacent to. So that's going to be an adjacency list. More formally, for each v in graph u, there is an undirected edge between node u and node v. The graph has the following properties. There are no self edges, so there's no edge that points back to itself. There are no parallel edges, so basically there's no edge that goes from 0 to 1 and then 1 to 0. If v is in graph u, then u is in graph v. So if we see that you know 1 is directed from 0, then in 1 it'll say 1 is directed to 0. Now the graph may not be connected, meaning there may be two nodes, u and v, that there's no path between them. So there could be nodes that are just outside of this whole graph. Um, now, we want to find out if a graph is bipartite, if the nodes can be partitioned into two independent sets of A and B, such that every edge in the graph connects node, okay, blah, blah, blah. So that's a word fool, but more or less what they're trying to say is each edge in our graph is going to be, um, we can color each edge to another color. So if we start from zero, let's say we make this one red, the next ones we want to make blue. So these would be red, this would, these two would be blue. Now the next one here would have to be red, and we have to make sure that it's going to flip-flop every, every single way. So this one's like red, blue, uh, red, blue, red, blue. This one can't be partitioned into two because of this triangle here. Like if these two, this, this one goes from red to blue, then this one has to go to blue to red, but this one can't be blue to red, right? It's going to be the same, blue to blue. Uh, here, though, this would be able to get partitioned uh, because we can go like blue, red, red, blue, and that would fulfill our conditions here. So because this is a graph, um, what we can do then is do some sort of traversal, either depth for search or breadth for search, and just check to see if we could mark each one of these nodes the opposite color from the previous. And if we can do that and go through every single node, then that means, yes, we can make this bipartite. Now this problem is actually pretty complicated and I want to go more in depth. I just don't have the time though today. So let's just go high level and try to write some sort of algorithm where we could mark each one of these nodes as either, you know, zero or one and make sure that those conditions are going to be set each time we go down the line. And as long as we can hit every single one and say that it's always going to be 0 and 1, we know that we could partition these two. So uh, let's see. Let's start by, mm, well, um, I guess we'll start by initializing the n length of graph. And what I'm going to do is have an external array here. We'll start with negative ones. And what I'm going to do is create an array with all negative ones here. And what that means is each one of these nodes have been untouched. And what I'm going to do is create a queue. I'm going to do a breadth first search here. Uh, by creating a queue, first let's call it queue. And we will append a tuple starting at the very first node and we'll mark the color starting with zero. So zero will be the first color and one will be the next. All right, so while there's a queue, what do we want to do? Well, we need to make sure, well, first pop off everything. So the node and the, let's call it color equals queue.pop left. Now, if this color, or I should say, if in our color array dot node, if it's not equal to, I'm sorry, if it's equal to negative one, which means it's untouched, then we're gonna add to our queue every single adjacent path that can go down. So to do that, uh, let's first, well, before we do that, we're gonna mark our array, color node, to equal whatever color we brought in. Now we'll say for next in graph, node, we're going to append to our queue the next node as well as the color that we popped off. But keep in mind, we want to flip this flip this back and forth from 0 to 1, right? 
Now we can use the XOR operator to do that. So I'm just going to say XOR1. So that way if it's a 0, it'll go to 1. If it's a 1, it'll go back to 0. Now what else? Now after that, um, we need to make sure if color.node does not equal color that we brought in, that means something in here went wrong. So we have to return a false. Now, otherwise, if we can get through this whole loop, then we can return a true. So let's see if this works. Depend. Oh, of course, I'm going to make that a tuple here. And that looks like it's working. Let's try another one. This one should return a true. So it looks like that's working, right? But I'm not going to submit this because there are some edge cases here where this wouldn't actually work. Notice how we're just starting at the very first position inside of our graph, right? Well, what if that graph doesn't have an agency list? Or better yet, what if we have a bunch of nodes in here that don't actually connect anywhere else? Um, we can imagine there are situations where we'll have the no next node inside of this zero here, uh, and we'll tra traverse through each one, but it could be possible that we have another node here that says it's connected to, let's say, three, but we'll never go there because it's not connected from here to there. It's connected the opposite way. So if it's unconnected like that, like we can't just start from the beginning and assume that it's going to traverse the entire graph. So that's a problem. So what do we have to do? Well, basically, we need to start from each one and see if we can hit every single one of these colors. So then we'll have to say for i in range of n, we're going to have to start with every node and see if we can uh, take care of this. So what we'll do is we are going to uh, do this each time. But instead of appending the 0, I'm going to attach the i. And that way, we'll go through every single node as the beginning. Now, I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything here. Um, I think I will actually have to say, look, if the uh, color i we've already visited, so it does not equal negative 1, then we can just not do that because we've already visited that node, so we don't have to go through that all over again. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and try to submit this. Well, let's make sure it works here. So let's submit that. And there we go, accepted. Yeah, so this, um, I made it sound kind of easy, but really the reason why this works is actually pretty complex. I wanted to make a more in-depth video and go through like the whiteboard to explain why, uh, but I just don't have the time to do that. Maybe perhaps I'll go back to it someday uh, because this question I do see coming up uh, now and then, so. All right, hope that helps. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.